Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Lee. Today I will be presenting a study in which we looked at an attack on telecoms called SimSwaps. We investigated the feasibility and implications of these attacks. Let's begin. A SIM swap is an attack in which cell service in your phone is diverted into another SIM card in another phone, thereby cutting off your phone service and placing it in the hands of an unauthorized entity. In an attack, the adversary poses as the victim and calls into the victim's carrier to request a SIM swap. After the exchange, the victim's carrier goes ahead with the request and moves service over to a SIM card in the adversary's possession. In doing so, this cuts off all phone service to the victim. In our diagram, the victim also uses SMS two-factor authentication for her bank account. As a result, the adversary can now receive passcodes used for authentication. Clearly, attackers can abuse this to hijack phone numbers. Once they have taken over a number, attackers can bypass SMS two-factor authentication and perform further impersonation attacks. We've seen this to be an industry-wide problem, with constant stories about SIM swaps in the news. Our goal is to analyze carrier policy for SIM swaps. To that end, we studied five carriers in the prepaid market by signing up for accounts and calling in to request a SIM swap. At all of these carriers, we were able to break in. And we found insecure challenges being used across all carriers. This table shown lists all the authentication challenges we saw at least once. We group these into different categories and rate them based on their strength. Red represents insecure, green is secure, and yellow is insecure but previously unknown. I'd like to bring your attention to the previously unknown challenges. We realize that these challenges use information that can be created by an attacker in order to gain knowledge over. At two carriers, we were asked to provide information about the last payment. Four carriers, including those two, allow for unauthenticated refills with refill cards. An attacker can create a record after making a payment using a store-bought refill card. At three carriers, we were asked to name recently dialed numbers. An attacker can trick victims into calling known numbers, and some carriers even let us use incoming call records. To their credit, after reviewing our research, T-Mobile informed us that they had made changes to their customer authentication policy. We also found vulnerabilities in CSRs and by extension CSR interfaces. On multiple occasions, CSRs at two carriers allowed us to SIM swap without ever correctly authenticating. Some carriers even disclosed personal information without authentication, including answers to authentication challenges. Earlier, I had mentioned that with a SIM swap, multi-factor authentication using SMS could now be compromised, which could lead to account break-ins. In the second part of the study, we sought to reverse engineer the authentication policies of popular websites and determine how easy it is for an attacker to compromise a user's account, provided that they have successfully carried out a SIM swap. We signed up for accounts at each service and examined the multi-factor authentication login schemes and recovery option pairs. It's important to note that accounts were not filled out with anything beyond requests of personal information. Authentication findings may be different for real-world accounts with linked value, such as finance apps with attached bank accounts. The reason being there is more risk, and hence authentication policies may be stricter. Nevertheless, our method is useful for real-world users to take a look at their configurations and for companies to review their policies. We found that most of these websites recommend SMS for two-factor authentication. This means that if you get SIM swapped, your 2FA can now be bypassed. The attacker would then only need your password, which they could obtain via data dumps, social engineering, or compromising a means of account recovery, such as email. More importantly, we found 17 additional sites that allow for account takeover with a SIM swap alone. We notify these websites as part of the responsible disclosure process, and some websites have responded by making fixes and reporting them back to us. To read our full findings, recommendations, responses, and more, please visit our project website at issms2fasecure.com. 
I would also be happy to take any later questions through my email address, which is shown on the screen. We hope you found this talk interesting. On behalf of the whole research team, I thank all of you for checking out this project.